a few words of greeting. Um, nice to see everyone. And I hope you can hear me in the back. That's good, yeah. <clears throat> Very grateful to IT and technology so that we can uh, have people visiting through Zoom. So people in different parts of California and different uh, states. Okay, Oklahoma, <laughs> like that. And, um, you know, I, I'm delighted that people have supported the technology here. Um, many people, uh, you know, can't travel or it's, they're really out of state or, you know, need to stay home um, to take care of kids or their caretakers for other people or kids and all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> um very grateful for that. <clears throat> so one of the things we need to do is someone needs, you know, uh, to do the tea and water before. So Patty doesn't do it. Does that make sense? So, yeah. Um, a little typical, a typical um, Lama thing is, I would say, Patty, why didn't you do this first? You know. So <clears throat> many people don't understand the role of a real Lama or Rinpoche. Um, uh, then when someone's a uh, close student, particularly like an attendant, they're, they're always going to be a little bit like, you know, why didn't you do this or you didn't do that right, you know? Um, because only the most advanced students can deal with a little criticism. Most people can't, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about doing Yujim uh, Rimshe's um, confession prayer, but uh, the majority of people, look, they'll just they'll go to pieces. I'll never see them again if, if I just tell them, like, one little thing, right? So very much the hardest thing is to deal with. Um, also, criticism um, right out in front of everybody. Because <laughs> we want to say, could you meet with me afterwards and we'll talk about it, you know? Um, so uh, uh, that's, that's really, you know, high-level practice um, <clears throat> to do that. Because, um, of course, we always want to be praised and not blamed. We always want to have gain and not loss. What are the other two? Just hmm? yeah, pleasure and pain. I think you know we always want to be recognized and not ignored. You know that's really. I know would, you know sometimes we don't want to be seen. We want to just kind of be in the back or sneak in or something. But when we want to be recognized, we really want to be recognized, right? <laughs> so. Uh, traditional teachers, all of which have been all of mine, you know, will just, you, you don't know which one they're going to hit on, but um, when you're a tantric student, you say, okay, just, I, I really need to work on these um, eight worldly dharmas, so please, 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 will you um, be a Vajra master and help me realize these. And then I'm always kind of sorry I say it because I actually do it, you know, because of course, as a human being, normal kind of license plate, personal license, you know, normal, I, I want praise, I don't want blame. I'm, I'm never looking for loss. You know, if somebody says, you know, here's here's something you can gain here that you like, and here's something, and you're okay losing it. I, I'm not going to have one taste and say either way is fine. I want to be recognized and not ignored. So, so fundamental, these basic things, which uh, Dujim Roche mentions in the, the poem that we'll be looking at after we do the prayers. So, um, uh, that's a very special sangha. So, when sometimes, you know, when people like, you know, you're on the spot, you, you, you say, if you're a tantric dharma student, you say, I'm willing to be on the spot, you know, like that. So I'll put someone on the spot. I'd like, well, the first time I uh, 
worked with Bill, who's right here. Um, he drove me, it was so kind, you know, our power was off <clears throat> in Carmichael, so he had to drive me to buy some wood. And I said, you know, would you just drive faster? And this is a couple of times, and he didn't lose his shit. And I went, okay, this is good, you know. So, um, uh, but sorry, you're not being done tested. You know, there'll, there'll be more. You, you know, you always think, well, okay, that's over with. That little testing is over with. <laughs> so now, no, like with all my teachers, I, you know, you would know somebody for 10, 15 years, and they do the same thing. You know, and you'd be thinking, look, we covered that, you know. Um, so the the prayer we're gonna do after our, our regular narrative meditations is 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 really important to, you know, that we're just going over and over, you know, the, these basic things. Okay. So I just want to say a few things up front and uh, now let's begin. So um we have a a, a text that we're I don't know whether we got that and could put it on um, line. The... Mm, no, that's not it. Oh, maybe that is it. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Hmm. Um, where did this translation come from? Anybody? Huh, it's different. Huh. It, yeah, that's interesting. It's different than the one I have. Okay. Yeah, so that's interesting. Um, huh. Yeah. Where'd Patty go? Yeah, it's not, it's not the same one I have. It's interesting. Okay, no big D. You guys play with it. So, <clears throat> um, Dujan Rimshe um, was uh, a wonderful teacher that uh, many regarded as um, an emanation of Guru Rimshe or Padmasambhava. Um, he uh, uh, was universally uh, recognized um, by uh, all the great teachers, including uh, the Dalai Lama. And um, he had for a while the title of um, uh, head of the Nyingma school, head of the ancient ones. Um, <clears throat> generally, the uh, Nyingma school um, didn't have any head, very decentralized, or each monastery had their own head. But um, when uh, the majority of the Tibetan teachers had to leave Tibet in 1959-1960. Dalai Lama asked certain well-respected teachers, would you help keep um, the situation together? Uh, so um, everybody said, oh, yeah, we, we all respect. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, interesting. So, um, the uh, Dujim Rinpoche was was um, not not appointed, but unanimously um, proclaimed. Kind of, he was is regarded as a um, uh, Dzogchen master, and um, probably along with Tingo Kense Rinpoche, um, uh, did the most to promote um, uh, Dzogchen in the West. So we're doing this sometimes called confession prayer, prayer to recognize my own faults and keep in mind the objects of refuge, which um, kind of confession. So it's interesting when we're, people are misunderstanding highest level truth, um, particularly Dzogchen, where we say 
uh, everything's perfect and there are no faults, so why would we have a prayer that recognizes our faults, right? Um, sometimes people doing Dharma practice, particularly in America, um, think, oh, this is, um, this is too much religion, you know, like that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, this is a, a standard to um, acknowledge um, ourselves uh, and um, ask uh, for help is a very uh, standard practice in Dharma. The basic structure of the, the prayer is to, uh, we'll see if we go through it, is to recognize um, samsara really sucks, the addictive process, the confusion, the hatred, the wars, that everything really sucks. And there's absolutely um, nobody to rely on. In fact, we've been messing with and fooling ourselves. So maybe it's hopeless, but um, then uh, the kind of in the middle of the prayer, then, well, um, even though my faith and my confidence in the teachings and in the teachers really low, um, they haven't uh, lost confidence in me. So um, we, in the prayer, we start kind of uh, reviving ourselves and then um, eventually asking for blessings. Blessings in this sense mean, give, give me the power, give me energy um, and uh, to, to keep going. So it's a well-known prayer and it has that kind of structure, which is the same as any kind of um, teaching structure. And, um, you know, when I think about my work as a therapist, very similar to that, you know, people have to say, well, I'm, I'm here for a reason. <laughs> um, and I, I need some help, right? These are two really sane things. Um, what's uh, interesting about confession comes from the Latin, which is to acknowledge, right? doesn't mean beating up or blaming, just acknowledge. So I like to say, if if your meetings with yourself, otherwise known as meditation, with Lama or therapist, uh, are acknowledgement, you're making confession. If it isn't, you're just complaining. <laughs> so I find the older I get, I'm getting fizzier, or you know, I just stop complaining, you know. So um, but I'm interested in let's just say, okay, this is what we're working on. <clears throat> and that that's the spirit of the the prayer. So um uh I don't know, you can see the photo of Dr. Mouche. Uh uh, that's kind of a, uh, a famous photo because he was very um, playful and kind of joking. He was kind of um, joking with someone in the audience there, you know, like that, very interactional. <clears throat> Maybe we could, um, I could read a few lines for you or if you could scroll up maybe, so... I pay homage to the Guru, Shakyamuni, Victorious One, Supreme Guide of the Realm for this fortunate eon, Sons of the Victorious One, Assembly of Noble Bodhisattvas who tame sentient beings, Lord Guru, Matchless Savior of Beings in the Dark Age, the Three Roots and Oath-Bound Dharma Guardians, again and again, I ask on my heart, recalling you with longing and one-pointed mind, please turn your attention to me. Take hold of me with your loving kindness and with the power of your unhindered compassion, Grant your blessings so that my thoughts and aims are carried out in according with Dharma. Through the past acts, not without merit, I have obtained this precious human birth. Through the past merit, not slight, I have met the sublime Dharma. Accepted by the Guru, I was able to obtain empowerments, blessings, and essential instructions. All this wealth I now hold in my hand. So that's like the first part where um, you're kind of going, yeah, I, this is great. I, Got some good karma here, and I'm feeling very grateful. Um, generally, we start out this way, kind of, you know, we're really grateful when we find a Dharma center and um, meet the teacher and meet the Sangha members. I always hear like, gosh, it's a really nice Sangha, you know, which it is. Um, and 
oh, you're really nice. I've been to a lot of teachers and you really make it clear. And I'm really starting to meditate now. You know, that's kind of our New Year's resolution style of joining a, a group. <clears throat> but um, Dujan Rinpoche and I know, and you all know that then, you know, and we want someone's attention and blessings, but then something happens. But, are we there? Can we see the butt on the screen? You can see it. But, butt is the big eraser. <laughs> really like your butt. But my mind, like a babbling monkey, falls under the sway of the enticing, deceptive demon of destruction. And I cannot take advantage of the wealth that is my own. This distraction doesn't happen right away. Usually when we're starting a new relationship, new teacher relationship or therapist relationship, you know, it's all kind of great. I'm going to the gym and on this great center alliance or and <clears throat> but then, you know, if we're honest, we're a babbling monkey. And now and I cannot take advantage of the wealth that is my own. Thus, this free, well-favored human birth and the Lama's teaching are both wasted. Now I am at a turning point. So this is a very important part in the um, prayer, the meditation prayers. Everybody here um, has probably had a whole bunch of turning points, or maybe you haven't gotten there yet, where... You know, things seem to be going really well, like, gosh, the meditation's going great, and everyone seems so nice, and the teachers are praising, and, you know, but then we hit an obstacle. The important, one big important takeaway from today is, if you're doing the practice correctly, you will hit your obstacles. If you are not doing the practice in a way, you will think the obstacles are out there. So people sometimes ask me, like, how do you know when someone, you know, is not in recovery? Because I don't usually send people out for drug testing or they usually don't show up wasted sometimes. If they're still blaming. If you're still blaming others, I don't care how many meetings you've been, how long you haven't been doing your coke, your meth, your alcohol, you're not in recovery yet. When you're in recovery, you kind of go, you know, I'm going to take some responsibility for, you know, this. Yeah, stuff happens to us, you know. No, none of us are asking for the Mideast war, or Ukraine, or climate crisis, or the election, but we're taking responsibility for our emotions and our responses, right? But when we're no longer taking responsibility for our own responses, we're just reacting, then that's when we know we're not doing dharma or recovery. So now I am at a turning point. All the teachings that I've asked for, all I have received are like a myth. My body has the appearance of a practitioner, and I have a practitioner's conceit. My mind cannot fathom the true teachings. Lacking even a trace of common dharma, much less holy dharma, the 16 rules for ordinary social behavior are just something that I have heard of. Seeing myself behave badly, I'm without shame. Seen by others, I'm un unembarrassed. My bond to the teachings is as short as a marmot's tail. <laughs> <laughs> There's this great bougie um, sportswear called marmot, you know, so I... I like to wear it, then I remember, oh, my patience is as short as a marmot's tail. <laughs> it's good to, you know. <clears throat> Unable to practice properly true dharma's ten virtuous deeds, are being sectarian bias toward the Buddhist teachings, I slander and, and slander the teachings and great beings and gather up bad karma. So, of course, we have different opinions about different dharma teachers and... Um, you know, like that, but um, uh, Dujan Rinpoche was well known to being very interested, just like Dalai Lama, just like I am, just like I hope you are, and like seeing a, a different variety of presentations of Dharma, right? We're not like one size fit all. We're, in fact, the temple I like to say, um, using my um, fashion metaphor, is what? This is a 
bespoke, like a bespoke clothing, right? Just made for us. Hmm. They didn't think that was funny. Oh. I think it's funny, Kyle. But <clears throat> based on Dharma, I carry great weight of evil deeds. The more teaching I've received, the more my vision of myself inflates. Though intellectual analysis cannot penetrate the deep meaning of the teachings with conceit, I think, I keep the Pradimoksha disciplines. But the four virtuous Dharma practices have been lost without a trace. With conceit, I think, I possess the precious Bodhisattva training, but the four measurables are just like pictures of a lamp. With conceit, I think, I keep the secret Matrayana Samayas, but not respecting the first root transgression, I become careless about all the rest. Little test. What is, what is the first root transgression? Please, someone get this one. What is the first tantric downfall? Yes. Yeah. Speak up. Disparaging. Yeah. Disparaging the teacher doesn't mean you can't ask the teacher, like, you know, that was kind of weird. Why'd you do that? Um, so it doesn't mean Pollyanna stuff, but you know, once once you start, you know, if you really start having um, what uh, Andrew and I call super negative transference, it's hard to do the work, right? It's just hard. So it always becomes a work through because we have to do that. But in this case, um, uh, you know, it's really disparaging. Is really like this is you know. If it's a good teacher, I need it. this is just totally aft, and then it bounces back on us, right? So traditionally, we'd say um, maybe that uh, that teacher has a lot of good qualities. Some of the qualities I can't appreciate, so I'm going to work with another teacher. But you know, we don't go from like one dating one teacher, and then well, that was aft, and then another one, and that was aft, and you know, we just we have a different approach. So. <clears throat> I can briefly explain the four thoughts that turn the mind to dharma, but my attachment to phenomena shows that my own mind has not truly changed. Though I rely on a teacher, respect and devotion slowly ebb away. Instead of having pure perception, I have wrong views and see the guru as my equal. Love and respect toward my Vajra friends weakens. Unable to endure a few harsh words, I can play constantly. Lacking thorough training in bodhicitta, the love and compassion that comes from seeing all beings of the six realms as my parents disappears like mist. Though I act as if I practice the paths of generation and completion, I cannot even cope with ordinary endless delusion. I recognize that the ultimate teaching of Sutra and Tantra is emptiness, but cannot make use of that recognition, my mind stream stays hard as horn. When I practice remaining in mind's true condition, I'm without stability, yet I mouth off about the profound view and toss cause and effect to the winds. On the outside, I can give a show of good behavior. On the inside, desire, attachment, greed, rage like fire. Though my body remains an isolated mountain retreat, my mind wanders into town constantly, night and day. Without enjoying a real measure of certainty in myself, thinking to act for others' benefit is just a fairy tale. Although it is impossible that the three jewels betray me due to my weak devotion, I fear I will betray myself. Thus, although I am without the wrong view of not believing in the Guru and the sacred Dharma, in these bad times we sentient beings are busily perfecting our bad karma, knowing heedlessly, falling under the sway of unawareness, failing to maintain mindfulness, we suffer a great loss. Right now, when I examine myself, I see that everything I've done is only added to my confusion. All my thinking has been stained by the obscuring emotions and by grasping, not seeing that even my virtuous acts are polluted with negativities. Where else is there to go but in the lower realms? As for the way I behave and what I've done, bringing these to mind, I am sickened. Looking to others, I am only more discouraged. There are no friends to benefit and ease my mind. If I cannot take care of myself now, others cannot give me refuge when hope is exhausted. And I am in the hands of the messengers of the Lord of Death. To wait for a rescue that can never come, is that not self-deception? Thus with shame and remorse, recognizing my own errors, whatever offenses against Dharma, 
have occurred, whatever Samaya transgressions and violations, I will not try to conceal from those with wisdom vision. From the bottom of my heart, I confess with your compassion, please endure me. So this is that central section where we acknowledge and um, we have true regret and true remorse <clears throat> and then ask for help. This is the most difficult piece, don't you think? I think very difficult. Because um, when we've been hurt and we feel it's not our fault, it's doubly difficult. But it's even hard when it's been our fault and we've been idiots to kind of go, yeah, I really feel sorry and regret that I blew that up or um, I didn't see that. But to go through a healing process, um, to wake up, um, we have to acknowledge and we have to have real, a, a real inner sense of, um, a good word is just remorse, sadness and remorse, and then say it. This is really difficult, right? So um, it's scary when people don't have uh, any remorse, right? <laughs> you know? Um, <clears throat> When, when I was working with um, volunteering out at Folsom Prison, I've mentioned a bunch of times that there were these incredible um, men, it was all men's prison, uh, who, who had done some work on themselves and they could express regret and remorse and they would do different things differently, you know? So it was an interesting question to ask somebody you think you'd do anything differently next time? But a bunch of guys said no. You know, so that, that was a little scary, actually, right? I'm really not a like a prison builder person. <laughs> we have the highest prison population, I think. Is it true it's higher per capita than China or something? But I was thinking, yeah, maybe you need to be here a few more years. <laughs> <laughs> But there, there is some rhythm of uh, talking about the process here. First things were kind of great, everything went my way, and then I realized I screwed things up. You now I have to like, I feel bad about that and I feel it emotionally. And now I'm ready to say it out loud to openly admit it, that's confession. And then we'll see what he says. Be my refuge from the danger of the precipitous errant path. Grant the deliverance of finding the perfect liberating path. My whole life has been spent practicing this and practicing that with nothing in my hands to show for it, no attainment. From now on, avoiding the miserable path of knowing much and missing the one thing I need, why not go on the path of knowing the one thing that frees all? Certain unfailing hope, sole supreme Lord upon whom I rely, root guru combines all refuges at one, I supplicate you with devotion and one-pointed mind. Supreme refuge, Lord of great greatest kindness, take hold of me with your compassion. Grant your blessing that I may be able to see my own faults. Grant your blessing, I have no wish to see the faults of others. That's a good daily prayer. <laughs> That's really... <laughs> uh, moving on. Okay. Grant your blessing, evil, cruel, and vicious thoughts be pacified. Grant your blessing, wholesome thoughts arise from deep within. Grant your blessing, desire may lessen and contentment increase. Grant your blessing, I remember the uncertainty of the time of death. Grant your blessing, I be unconcerned at the time of death. Grant your blessing, I develop trust in Dharma. Grant your blessing, I practice impartial pure perception. Grant your blessing, I develop unfabricated devotion and respect. Grant your blessing, I persevere, seeing that I have so little time left. Grant your blessing, I be able to establish Dharma as my ultimate innermost goal. Grant your blessing, I pers persevere and practice the ultimate goal of the Dharma. Grant your blessing, I free my mind stream from the innermost the innermost practice. Grant your blessing, I have no obstacles to practice. Grant your blessing, the fruit of my practice may ripen quickly. Grant your blessing, all conduct with those with whom I have karmic link may be meaningful. Grant your blessing, the duality of hope and fear be distinct, 
extinguished. Grant your blessing, I see non-dual wakefulness. Grant your blessing, I recognize my own innate wakefulness. Grant your blessing, I hold the Dharmakaya citadel. Grant your blessing, I gain the great effortless certainty. By means of the great weapon, indestructible primordial wakeful awareness, may the void life force of samsara nirvana be severed at once. Then in the unending great bliss of Vajragarva's feast, may we always enjoy the activity that is beyond joining and parting in the pervasive space of evenness, even the word suffering does not exist. So, who ought to be striving for happiness? In the kingdom of Samantabhadra, happiness and suffering are of one taste. Without grasping, they liberate of themselves. May I attain Samantabhadra's kingdom in this very life. So, yesterday I was talking to some folks and they said, well, who, who's... Um, um, uh, who is Vajagarva, and that's um, the uh, uh, consort part of Vajrasattva. So the consort part of Vajrasattva is over the Tonkabai mic there. Um, so like uh, that's like something like Vaj Vajra confidence woman, Vajra pride woman, something like that. It's nice. So Vajrasattva is a is a, a they. <laughs> Not he, she really is a they. So the confidence. So it's nice to have that. Just we we go through uh the prayer, the meditation, and the end is we have real confidence, don't we? We can do it like that. Hmm. So I've done this prayer a number of times, and every time uh, I, you know, get something new out of it, right? But um, I really wanted to break it down. So the, there's kind of a rhythm. So even if we're not doing um, this particular meditation prayer, um, uh, Dijim Ramshe is kind of pointing out how, in general, our our journey works. It is kind of honeymoon, and then. There's a dip and there's some magic or karma or something. And then, you know, there's, there's a building back up. So I'd like to stop here and get some feedback. See if this has been useful or there can be questions and comments and debate too. But we all we need the microphone, yeah. Um, yeah, hello. I was just thanks for that. I was wondering what is a wisdom consort? Where is that? The bottom of the page it explains the origin of the, the confession. Uh, that's his wife. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. If you identify as female, then your wisdom consort would be male. <laughs> or they, you know, maybe. Thank you for Hi. the prayer. I'm a little curious, you know, you talk as if it's sort of like a one-time cycle, but I would guess or my question really is is this just something that kind of repeats itself from time to time yeah our lives? well maybe every day <laughs> <laughs> you know that we do i mean that we you know so if we understand you know the rhythmic process of the journey then um uh we we don't uh you know totally give up right so um we're we're constantly starting out with inspiration that's a little bit um, uh, naive, perhaps, or, you know, and then, um, and, you know, the practice kind of falls off a little bit and we take things for granted. And then hopefully there's enough um, juice and karmic connection that then um, 
we remember to ask for help and that we have uh, our support system already in place, right? So um, I, I would say it, it almost can repeat on a daily level because we tend to have these ups and downs and um, but it's on a big level too. So I'm presenting this prayer as a real meditation, which it's meant to be not just, um, you know, bless me, Father, I've sinned and do, you know, 12 Hail Marys, you know, and then you're all done. No, this is a way to um, look at how we generally do our practice. It's very dramatic, you know, that Dijon Rinpoche was a really incredible poet. So Tibetan imagery is always very dramatic and, um, you know, does feel a little bit like, um, you know, uh, theater or, you know, John Milton in Paradise Lost or something. But um, the, the poem is meant to be stirring and the meditation is meant to be. So we're, we're not, um, you know, just thinking about it. We can generally tell when someone, um, maybe you can't always, but if something's pretty surface and somebody goes, um, I'm sorry if you thought I hurt your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as opposed to somebody that's really, you know, really says, I I really goofed up and um uh you know, I, I'm you know, it shows some empathy to what we went through and um maybe even tries to make some kind of, uh, you know, gesture of uh, amends or something like that, you know, then, then we, then ten, we tend to soften too, you know, people are like, wow, I just really screwed up. I was not trying to justify themselves, you know, so the poem's trying to cut through this kind of self-justification that um, frequently um, comes along with an apology. Well, you know, I was just trying to help out, but if, you know, it didn't work for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, you know, this is a very um, uh, helping bodhisattva, chaplain-y kind of temple. So we're going to get a lot of like, you know, your suggestions and your meditation instructions or therapy, you know, actually made me worse. You know, and we're going to hear that, right? So the tendency is to become very defensive, right? But you have to kind of tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> so this poem's really good. Yes. Um, do you think that some of the, or all of the struggles that are described in this poem are actually a necessary part of the path? <clears throat> uh, I don't think they're all necessary at all, you know, but I think Dijin Rinpoche was trying to be um, uh, very comprehensive, you Can know. I revise my question to not being necessary, but being a, a usual or normal part of the path for most people. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, to use kind of Jungian ideas, I mean, we'll have a shadow side, right? And usually it's not acknowledged, let alone integrated, right? So uh, I found Vajrayana Buddhism, you know, the most receptive to talking about shadow material and working with, um, you know, strong emotions and psychosis and everything else, you know. Um, but um, uh, I think, you know, going through hope and fear and discouragement and um, having difficulty apologizing is very universal but this is big right you know so really helps to you know just acknowledge and say you know i'm sorry but um we have to we have to be um skillful how we say we're sorry too don't we this is a big question i can't i better stop here because then I'll talk the rest of the time thank you Good question. You have the mic. Thank you, Lama. Um, I'm wondering how um, spiritual materialism might fit within this, if you could speak to that. 
Well, he's very, you know, <laughs> he goes, there are lots of verses about, you know, being kind of a phony Dharma practitioner. Um, however, it's very natural, and I, I process to, um, and very Tibetan to admit you're a phony Dharma practitioner. So, you know, when people say, uh, you know, I feel like an imposter, and I go, yeah, that's the imposter feeling as, you know, we're starting to recognize some gap between, you know, our, our thoughts and our activities, because it does feel like an imposter thing. The hard part is when there's no insight, right? Um, and some of the um, translations I have of Dishu Rinpoche's um, talks, like he ends one with, well, I have this title Lama, and because um, uh, all you people need some teachings, and I'm giving it, but actually, it's just been a big burden because every once in a while, a sense of pride happens, and then, you know, the whole thing goes to shit, you know. And across the digital membership, you're listening to somebody who's incredibly funny and kind and also sharp, but humility is a huge, huge, big thing. Um, I like the word humility too. I took four years in Latin, so I have to use it once in a while because it comes from hummus like earth. So it's very grounding to be, you know, just, I'm just walking on the planet like everybody else. So when we do the practice, whether we're doing this prayer or just doing any of our meditation, the experience going forward is just a, a real sense of um, groundedness and, and, um, uh, our sense of place in things so that, that we're confident as what we can do and what we can't do like that. Yeah. But it, it, um, I think we, I think we, we have to kind of go through this. I, I just, if somebody goes, you know, I've never had any doubts. It's all been, you know, hot knife through warm butter. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I just, mm -hmm. I've never gotten depressed. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I, I, I want to hear it, you know. Um, we're hopefully here. We've created some safe environments where people can, you know, do some appropriate sharing, whether it's personally or group or something. Yeah. Cool. Just to follow up on what Andrew said, um, you know, when when you have the you, you, the imposter feeling or whatever like that, yeah. I've I, I've had recommended to me to kind of fake it till you make it, but I mean sometimes you can keep doing that and it still seems like you're you're pushing against a wall or something. I mean, is is that just only work sometimes, or is that really a good thing to keep trying to do? Um. You know, so you know, we have that kind of meme. Maybe it's from recovery or something. But um, uh, we, what we're really saying from a dharma point of view is that um, it's all practice, not perfection. So we we recognize that we're we're kind of doing it, but that's the only thing we can do. That we have to, um, in a sense, do it wrong repeatedly until it clicks in. So it's very strange, you know, you think the only way to get something right is to do it right from the very start. But um, it's a mix, like we hear teachings or we have models or we have, and then we're we're refining it. So, um, you know, that's the interesting part about what I call the Shambhala journey is, yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's something in us um, monkeys that can learn and, you know, self-correct our behavior based on um, both inner and outer support. So Dharma is a learning model. It is not a revelation model or um, just a discovery model. Just just a discovery model, which is a little bit, sometimes a Dzogchen model is like, it's all there and you just happen upon it. But generally, overall, the model is um, going to be practice and, and uh, growth like that, you know, um, trial and error kinds of things. 
like that. So we have to make a big support for that, like that, yeah. Um, and Vajrayana tradition, we kind of um, embrace the idea of faking it by um, saying, yes, we, we are here to create an illusory body, right? <laughs> the illusory body is like fully feeling like um, one of the archetypal bodies, you know, that um, is displayed in the tankas here, like, you know, every once in a while, we're doing a lot of sadhana practice around um, a Buddha Dev, and then you start feeling like, oh, I'm actually looking like Tara or, or Vajragini or something. For men, uh, it's really interesting to have that, to know that our sense of body um, identity is, you know, very, um, actually quite fluid. So, um, you know, personal experience, it, it just, you can actually do, do a lot of female deity practice and you start really imagining you have a different kind of body. It feels different, the whole sense. So um, we call that the illusory body. Um, dream work is enormously important, right? And it's kind of illusory, right? But it has enormous energy and importance in it. So it's kind of fake in a way, but we know we're using the we're using the energy of it. So when we know that we're dreaming or have lucid dreams, then that's very powerful, right? So we don't believe everything we dream. We're not making it um, that way, and we don't. One of the points of meditation is not believing everything we think. So it's illusory like that. So it is kind of fake, but in a healing way. Oh, well, that's a good question. Hey. Hi. We have two people, one and guy in front of you. Hi. Hi. Just wanted to make a quick comment that I liked. I really liked the part in the prayer where he's saying we remember, you know, this this Vajra thing, but we forget the four immeasurables. Yeah, I just I thought that contrast. You know, I felt, you know, it was reflective because uh, uh, what are the four, you know, these basic things that are so important that it's easy to forget. Yeah. So I found that helpful. Yeah, that's a good point. If I get elaborate on that. So, um, uh, all, you know, all my teachers have been kind of tantric, but my main root teacher, very tantric, very Mahasiddha style. And, um, you know, I was, complaining, of course, because I was a complainer too, about this one, you know, some of these tantras are very long, you know, and you say, oh, I'd like the impairment on Guru Samadhi or something like that. I know most of you people may not know that, but then you think, well, that's really cool, then I get to have all these arms and visualize myself. Yeah, and then you just have a whole lot of mantras to do. And after a while, it's not that much fun, right? Well, maybe it is for you. Anyway, so <clears throat> I, came, I said, you know, why why do we have to do all this Tantra stuff? And I've mentioned many times, he said, because you didn't get the first noble truth. You didn't get the Brahma Viharas. So people, us, doing Vajrayana practice with elaborate rituals and color, and we should be thinking, yeah, we're the folks that didn't get it the first time or the second time. <laughs> so when we're talking to my Zen friends or Vipassana friends, they're saying, ah, you know, we just sit and look into nature of mind, or if someone's just doing Dzogchen, just formless practice, I say, you know, I'm so happy for you. You know, I, I have to do all these things, you know, because I... I, I don't get the simple stuff unless I get the complicated stuff out of the way. I go, oh, okay. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Somebody's right in front of you had a question too. Oh, thank you. So uh, I really found it interesting when you spoke about these thoughts that come up, like judgments about the world, yeah. and how that kind of like can sully your own world, just this kind of mind of judgment and wanting to replace that with a pure mind. Yeah. Um, and uh, also this remorsefulness that you need to confess. Uh, so um, 
I was kind of just thinking, you know, part of the part of what's drawn me to Buddhism is this kind of uh, uh, object of mind, the thoughts that make you feel terrible, you know, but then you realize it's just an illusion. And you're talking about kind of remorse and the people for people that get trapped in remorse mm -hmm. um, and can't move beyond it. Yeah. And they, they, it's almost like they, they do it in vain. Their remorse is kind of in vain. How do you make sh sure that your, your remorse is being put to good use? That's a really complex question and answer. Kind of interesting way. More but um uh I, I wish I could phrase it better. Yeah, no, it's fine. I'm just thinking. So um <clears throat> the, the, it's it's complex, you know. There's the, recognizing a thought as a thought, being able to see thoughts as structure, um, cognitive structure is really important, you know, because then we can separate content from process, right? That's a huge thing. That's a big step. You know, if people can do that, you know. Um, however, that doesn't mean the content is necessary because thought as a solid cognitive structure uh, is not a solid of cognitive structure. It doesn't mean that the content is non veridical. Just because I'm thinking, uh, you know, the door is red, I'm thinking the door is red. So if I thought the thought itself was a concrete object that I could put down, you know, it's not right, but that doesn't mean I'm wrong that the door is red. It's kind of it's maybe kind of too much epistemology, or but uh, it's important to recognize that content makes a difference. So we can have two things: we can have a very understanding of the emptiness of the process, which means it's it's not an objectified solid thing by itself, but that the content still has meaning and energy. That's what we're trying to do in tantra. So we could have a thought that, you know, uh, you know, I, I hate Donald Trump. So um, I can recognize, well, that's a thought, which is true, but there could be some, you know, actual content to that, right? So then I have to notice um, is, you know, how, what's, what's the effect of that content? So I have to, you know, so the confession prayer is working with, with that. So uh, to develop other states of mind um, or insights that, uh, uh, you know, that strong emotion may get in the way. So I want to liberate that, right? But that doesn't mean that later I might want to work so someone does, doesn't get elected, you see. <laughs> I'm just putting it like politics out there, okay? So, so you know, somebody could say, well, that's kind of hate, you know, that's kind of strong. And well, it can be because it can be all consuming. Like, I'm just so consumed with watching the news and the jerks that I can't, I've because I've talked to people that I'm so confused uh, and, and you know, about everything, I can't meditate anymore, right? So, there are two things there's process and content going on. But I don't want to take away that, yeah, things are confusing and they're jerks and we need to do something, right? So each step of the way, we, we do need to um, bring a wisdom and a motivation to it that that goes towards what in Dharma we call like, you know, full functioning like that. Does it end up, you know, whatever step we take meditatively or actively, does it end up um, ha having a functional result that we can live with? You know, so it isn't just saying things are empty and that's the final word. No, the final word is really, is this doing any good? You know, just eventually comes back to hopefully some common sense, like, is this leading me to um, be more helpful and happy and free and let others be more happy and free, even if it might be individually true, right? It's true. We could say, well, I'm very angry with this person, but... If we're stuck on that, then we have to um, use it more skillfully. But it's very difficult, right? So when we're working with ourselves, how do we do that? So we're not stuffing it again or blaming ourselves for blaming others, right? That would be funny, but we do that, right? So the idea and the Dharma idea here is um, we try to model our behavior on um, uh, 
functionalities, the three jewels that, um, you know, will hopefully, you know, you know, have some light to them like that. It's very complex, right? Do you agree? Yeah. Yes, but thank you. That that kind of brings it back to the root. Like, what good is it doing? What good can I do? What good what can come from this? Can we stay focused more on that? Yeah. Usually, um, uh, you know, most of the time people have a really hard time just acknowledging. I know that it's California. It's weird, but people still have a hard time just acknowledging emotions and feelings, right? Because we're constantly doing this. That's acceptable. That's not acceptable, you know? So the, the Dharma training says we can both be angry and love somebody at the same time. We can be disappointed in someone and also inspired by them at the same time. In fact, we could have, according to Buddha Dharma, we, we might have 51 things going on at the same time. We could have many mental, physical events going on at the same time, which we do, right? Like, I'm enjoying talking to you, but my knees are killing me right now. <laughs> Thank you. What's your name again? I'm David. David, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, we're coming to the end here. People have been very patient. No, 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 no. So I have a few announcements. Um, uh, Ling Rinpoche has uh, accepted our invitation to come uh, to teach. When is it, Patty and May? May 29th. Yeah. It have to do so in the middle of May. That seems very far out, but um, Ling Rinpoche is uh, a wonderful uh teacher and Lama that's very close to the Dalai Lama, um, since he's like the, the talku of the Dalai Lama's uh, close personal teacher. So um, he's a very special individual and really honored for him to visit. Um, and he'll give a public talk. And I'm trying to come up with, um, you know, topics, right? So um, maybe over lunch or later, this week, people can suggest things. So easy topics are having a teacher like give a talk on compassion or, you know, some known text, but also maybe he'd be open to something kind of edgy, you know, like that, you know, like very practical, like, you know, like what good is Dharma doing right now? <laughs> the world's really messed up. Do you think, you know, oh, you know, it could be kind of edgy, right? So if people come up with ideas, I'd like to hear them, you know. Any other announcements? Okay. Yeah. So um, on February 4th, we're going to have a refuge and a entering the path ceremony here. And that's very special. Mm. And um, so it's your, everybody's welcome to come and we'll and bring a dish to share. So. I hope to see a lot of you there. The fun part about this for me is I don't know some of the people um, that are uh, doing what we're calling entering the path ceremony where they're kind of, um, they're not making any promises to call themselves Buddhist or be perfect Buddhist. They're just saying, I. I I'm kind of interested in sticking around and acknowledging that. So um, the good news is um, uh, everybody running meditations and groups here is really doing a good job and it doesn't all have to come through me, right? That's great. So everybody that's doing it, fantastic. Yay. Hey, we get to sing, la la la. No, go ahead. We're gonna sing. I call it singing. Okay, good. So, Great. yes, uh, dedication on page fifteen. Due to the merits of these, these virtuous actions, actions may I quickly attain the state of the Guru Buddha, Buddha and lead all living beings, beings without, without exception into that enlightened state. state. May the supreme jewel, jewel Bodhicitta, that, that is not arisen, arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. 
In the land land encircled by snow mountains, mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful, turn mercy, tens and jasso, please please remain until until Samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Losang, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars, Sankapa, crown jewel of snowy land sages, Losangdrapa, I make requests at your holy feet. Oh dear, you need another picture of me. Go back, I'll show you. Isn't that a great, yeah. It's, I'm wearing um, Mongolian robes there. That's um, from New Year's. So usually I got me some Mongolian monastic robes, which are um, quite functional because they're really heavy because it's cold. Um, but um, usually I'm not wearing those. And then I'm wearing kind of, I have a blue um, a bag there. Yeah, I know, but um, just, uh, I'm always trying to think internationally, you know, people, oh, what's, oh, he's, yeah. But I like the Mongolians, but it, we should find another picture. It's fashion, right? Come on. Thank you, everybody. Oh, my hun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my.